Okay, so we're now recording. So, hello everyone. My name is Samantha or Sam Harlow, and I'm the online learning kinesiology public health education librarian for UNCG and the UNCG libraries. So, the University Teaching and Learning Center, or the UTLC, and UNCG libraries decided to collaborate on creating a series of webinars for the UNCG community on online learning and innovation. <coughs> this is, I believe, the sixth webinar for the series, and welcome. In this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, or ITCs, ITS staff, and faculty will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools, such as Canvas, Googlebox, WebEx, and more. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx Meeting Center and placed on the library webpage, um, which I'm going to throw in a chat, which you can also see that I'm sharing um, right now. So there it is in chat. So um, we will also give the recording of this file to the ITC or um, staff member who's presenting the materials, and they can put it where they see fit. I'm going to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run. Please mute your audio during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red, but feel free to turn your audio back on um, just by clicking the audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with the presenters or to ask questions throughout. If you do not have a microphone, you are also welcome to participate in the chat. I will monitor the chat for Rob as this is going on, so you don't have to worry about that, Rob. <coughs> Okay. And if you have any technical issues during the webinar, you can email me, which I'm going to throw my email and phone number into the chat, or call me, whatever you feel comfortable. And Rob, I'll be muted so you won't hear that. So before I introduce the presenter, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So um, this session is on using rubrics. This webinar is being presented by Rob Owens, the ITC for the, one of the ITCs for the Bryan School. This session is 30 minutes and will be recorded. And remember, you will get a follow-up email with the link to the recording as well as you can find it on this webpage that I threw into the chat. So I'm going to pass it to Rob. Are you ready, Rob? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. Oh. Let me find you. Okay. Great. Well, I don't want to do that. Okay. So, can everyone see my PowerPoint? Yes, no, maybe so. Yes, we can see it, Rob. Okay. Great, thanks. All right, again, as Sam mentioned, my name is Rob Owens. I am the ITC, one of the ITCs for the School of Business and Economics here at the university. I also teach part-time in a sport and performance psychology program at the University of Western States. So I do a lot of online teaching throughout the year, and I love rubrics. So I hope you guys get um, some good information out of this session. What I'm going to do, I'm going to actually quickly review the two different types of rubrics that are commonly used in higher education. I'm then going to show you how to create a rubric in Canvas and then how to add a rubric to an assignment in Canvas. Now, if I'm known for talking fast, so if I talk too fast, please let me know. Okay. This is an example of what we would call a holistic rubric. It's not the most commonly used rubric in higher education, but it is a rubric that is used. And so this is basically where you're combining multiple criteria into a single score. So for example, if your significant other made you breakfast in bed for Valentine's Day yesterday, you could evaluate that breakfast by saying, okay, how was the food, how was the presentation, and were you comfortable um, during your meal? So we can rate those on a scale of one to four. In contrast, the analytic rubric is something that is mostly used in higher education. I use it not only for my classes, but also in some of the professional organizations that I 
belong to for evaluating student work, for evaluating um, awards, and that sort of thing. And so with the analytic rubric, you have basically break out the criteria into different groups, and then you evaluate each of those criteria. So if we were evaluating breakfast and bed, we would consider food, presentation, and comfort, and we could rank each of those on a scale of from one to four. So let's switch here, and I'm going to try to move my monitor out of the way and switch monitors here. You should see Canvas right now. I've already logged in, and I'm going to use my Canvas training course for this demonstration. So, and you can use this in any of your Canvas courses. So I'm going to click inside Canvas. To create a rubric, there's a couple of different ways that you can create it, or at least two different ways in Canvas that you can create a rubric. The easiest way is to create the rubric as you have as when you're creating the assignment. So I'm going to click here in Assignments, and I'm going to create an assignment called Breakfast in Bed. I'm sure most of you have a lot of experience creating Canvas assignments. I'm going to assign this assignment just 12 points, and you'll see why here in a second. And then I'm going to save the assignment. So after you've saved an assignment in Canvas, you should see this plus rubric button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Canvas gives you a couple of options where you can create a new rubric. So I'm going to type a rubric for my breakfast in bed. Or I could find a rubric that I've already created, and I'll come back to that in a second here. So in terms of our breakfast in bed rubric, one of the things I suggest is to create your rubric in Word, and then you can copy and paste. So I am going to click on the description of Criterion. And so if I'm creating a simple holistic rubric, remember, you know, um, we we're just ranking so we we're just ranking our breakfast and bed experience on a scale of one to four. So in this long description, you can actually use something else depending on what, what, what you're doing, what type of rubric you're creating. But since I'm just creating a holistic rubric real quick, I'm just going to just call it a holistic rubric. And then I'll select Update Criterion. So now you can see I have one criteria. By default, Canvas has given that five full points from a range from five to zero. Our rubric was based on a scale of one to four. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to click on a pencil icon. And I'm going to change that rating score to four. And I'm going to say that a score of four means I had an exemplary experience with my breakfast. I could give that a description for time's sake, because I know these webinars are short. I'm going to skip that. Select Update Rating. Now I'm going to go and edit the zero points, because we know we don't give zeros. We're going to give a one for that. And I'm going to call that beginning. It's like, you know, it was a good try for my breakfast in bed, but, you know, it didn't really stand up. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was an okay breakfast in bed. So now I have my uh, range of one to four. So I'm going to click to add my other ratings here by clicking on the plus sign. So I have my rating of three, which I'm going to call accomplished based on a rubric I just showed you. In general, I would give it a description, but again, for sake of time, I'm not going to do that. 
uh, I'll click on a plus sign in between three and one to add a criteria, a rating between three and one. Canvas automatically knows that it should be a two. I'm going to call this developing. And then I'll click again, update rating. So this is basically, I could now just say create rubric, and this would be a very simple holistic rubric that I could use um, in my uh, course, if it was, for example, a cooking class. Since, again, since most folks in higher education, we don't use holistic rubrics a lot, we use analytic rubrics, I'm going to instead begin to expand this rubric to make it an analytic rubric. So the easiest way to do that is to add, my, is to add additional criteria, and um, a, good, a good best practice is to add your first criteria with all its ratings first, so when you go to add a new criteria, which I'm about to do by clicking plus criterion, I have this great option that says duplicate breakfast in bed. So I'm going to click on breakfast in bed. I'm going to duplicate it. And you see now I have uh, an additional criteria that I can change it to something else. So in our holistic rubric, we had three different categories. We had food, we had presentation, and we had comfort. So I'm going to call this one presentation. I'm going to edit the first criteria and change that to food. And then you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to click on that plus criterion sign and say copy one of the two of these, food or presentation, are basically the same, and call that comfort. We want to be comfortable when we're having our breakfast in bed. So update criterion. So now we've gone from having a holistic rubric to an analytic rubric. If I wanted to um, say quickly, I'm going to edit this quickly, just to add a rating description so we have something in there. So my food rating of, of exemplary for food is like all the food was perfectly cooked. And I can update my rating. For presentation, I can edit that and say that food was served on a clean tray. And then for comfort, I'm going to add a rating description that says that I was, that the recipient of the food was woken gently and lovingly. Okay, so now I have some example criteria. So once I add all of my uh, descriptions for my criteria, Canvas also gives you a few options here at the bottom. If you decide, well, I'm just going to rate the students on a scale of one to four, and I don't really want them to see the ratings, I can select, I'll write free form comments when assessing students. You see when I click that, all the ratings go away. Um, I'm not sure when you might use that, but based on your content, there might be a reason why sometimes you don't want students to see the ratings in some classes, and then um, and there may be other classes where you do want them to see the ratings. So I'm going to change that back to ratings. I'm going to say I'm going to use this assessment for assignment grading. Most of the time you are going to use it for grading. There may be a situation where you might have students doing peer reviews where they're not really assigning each other's each other grades, but they are rating each other on a particular assignment. So I can select that. If I am going to use the rubric for assignment grading, but I don't want students to see the, uh, the total score for some reason, I can select hide score total from the assessment results. So you can see that the 12 went away. But for this case, I'm going to say use this rubric assignment for grading and click Create Rubric. And it is as simple as that. When I'm ready to publish, I can click on Publish. And now I have, click on Assignments again, now I have my Breakfast in Bed assignment with the associated rubric. OK. So it's very simple to create rubrics in Canvas. The other way that we can create rubrics, if you don't want, if you want to create a rubric outside of creating an assignment, is to select outcomes. So if I click on the Canvas menu and select icon, I mean outcomes, you'll see I have plus outcome, plus group, 
and find in your probably think like Rob, where where's the rubrics at some of the outcomes? Well, Canvas is kind of hidden them. I guess they want faculty to like play some type of search and find mission or whatever, go on a search and find mission. But if you click on the three little dots here, you'll see manage rubrics. You can select that. And you can see the rubrics that I've created in class. I can select one of these rubrics and edit the, edit the rubric if I wanted to. And actually, then I can actually create a, a new rubric and then assign it to a current assignment or create a new assignment and assign it to or create a new assignment and assign a rubric. So I'm going to go ahead. And, and if there's any questions as I'm going through this, please let me, me know. OK. So now that we know how to create a rubric and how to find rubrics in our class that we've already created through outcomes, I'm going to actually look at an assignment that already has a rubric attached to it to illustrate how you can actually grade with rubrics. So one of my assignments in this particular uh, test class is called the Diversity Award Application. It's a rubric that I actually used as part of, I'm a, the chair of the diversity committee for the Association for Applied Sports Psychology, and we evaluate applicants for uh, graduate students for a diversity award. So in this example rubric, we have four different criteria. It's based on the student's essay for the award. You know, did it address issues related to diversity in sport and exercise psychology? Um, what's the research background of sport and exercise psychology? Uh, what were their uh, professional or paraprofessional contributions to the field? And um, how well was the recommendation letter written, or did they have a good a good uh, reference a recommendation letter? So we have this assignment here. Now, for again time's sake, I went ahead and um, had someone submit this assignment ahead of time. So when after your students have submitted the assignment, you should be able to go under Speed Grader right here to the right. Click on Speed Grader. And you can see here, my students submit the application for the award. On the left-hand side, there's an option called View Rubric. So I can click that. You can see, oh yeah, that's really small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, drag, and hold and move this window over a little bit so you can actually see the rubric and how to grade, um, grade your students. So now in this particular rubric, I've already graded it once, but I'll grade it again. If the student really, you know, did okay or did just maybe just a little bit above average or average in terms of addressing the importance of diversity in sport and exercise psychology, I can click on three. You can see here the points change automatically. I can, I'll do give them a three for diversity in SCP. I'll keep it a five in contributions to the field. And then I'll say the recommendation letter, if they didn't have one, can give a zero, but they did have one, but it wasn't the best recommendation letter. And you can see here I have t total points 13 out of 20. Now, one of the good things or or Unique things, especially if you've used rubrics, say, and with Turnitin or with Blackboard, is that Canvas, and at least our version of Canvas, we don't have a range in terms of these points. So you can see here, I actually put a range, but this is just a description of the criteria. This is part of the description of the criteria. The actual points are above the score. So for example, um, if I wanted to change a score, say the recommendation letter, when I click on it, it gives an automatic two points, but I'm thinking like, you know, the recommendation letter really deserves just one point. I'm going to change it to one point, right? And so now you can see it didn't, it stopped highlighting the uh, two points, but it did update the total score from 13 to 12. I can also do a comment about this particular criteria and say something like, which I already typed one out, in the future you should consider providing your CV to your references, because um, maybe the reference letter didn't address anything, the student's uh, background in applied sport and exercise psychology, it talked about other things. Or maybe you f I felt that the reference letter, that the person giving the reference really didn't know the student. So you can give a little comment there. Now, as a caveat, 
providing comments for, for each of the criteria is is not it's, it's hard for students to find those comments and I'll show you why here in a second so even though you can provide comments for each of these criteria I suggest instead of doing that to actually provide comments at the very end overall comments you can see I provided one already I'm going to say I'm going to provide another say overall good application And then I can click Save, su submit the comment, and then click Save. Now you can see that I can see each of the criteria in my rubric. I can see what um, points the students got for each of the, what rating students got for each of the criteria, and the total amount of points that they received. I also, if I want to, I could take another look at the application just to review if I feel like, you know, maybe I should have given them an additional point for diversity and um, SCP research. I can then take another look at the application and do that. So now I'm going to get out of the faculty view and go into the student view so you can actually see what your students will see. So I'm going to log out as an instructor. I'm going to log back in using my student account. I have a secondary account. If you want a secondary account, you can request that through Six Tech. And I'm going to sign in. So you can see here, I'm now in my student account. I'm going to click on the Canvas Training Owens, which is, again, the um, the dummy course for this training. And so when I click in, I can see, oh, I have a new grade here. So it says grades in one. So I can click there as a student. Canvas will put a little circle next to the assignment that's been graded. I can see what score I got, how many total points the assignment was. I can also then click and see the comments that I received, the overall comments that I received um, for this particular assignment. If I, as a student, want to see the rubric, I can also then click on this little rubric icon, and I can see how I was evaluated. And when students go, when students, and I didn't, I'm not, I didn't have, a, uh, I don't have time to show you folks this, but when students actually go to submit the assignment, they will also see the rubric. Too, so they'll know exactly how they've been evaluated. So they can look at the rubric before they submit the assignment, and then when they go back and look at their grades, they can see the rubric again. The one thing I did want to mention again is that if you do provide uh, comments to individual criteria within the rubric, it doesn't appear on this screen. As you can see, I see the overall comments, but I don't see the comment that was, that was made about my reference letter. So in order to see that, I actually have to click inside of the assignment, select Show Rubric, scroll through the rubric, and then I can see that there's a comment here. Click on that comment, and then I can see in the future consider providing your CV to your references. So that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend providing a comments to individual criteria and just providing comments to the to the overall um, rubric uh, instead of to each of the, instead of to each criteria if that makes sense if you are going to do that you should probably tell your students how to um, see those particular comments so are there any questions regarding creating a rubric attaching um, a rubric to an assignment or grading the assignment. There's no chat. There's no chat questions either. Um, oh, okay. Just what you know, I've been monitoring it. Okay. But, so let me go, because we only. It looks like we only have five minutes left anyway. So let me go back and log. Okay, wait. I see one. Is there a way to attach criterion to SLOs? To student learning outcomes? That is a good question because I have not used um, 
the um, the outcomes feature. So I would have to actually look into that, Monty. And so um, if you want to talk to me later, since I since you are part of the School of Business, we can actually look at that. I'm assuming that there is because the um, rubrics are part of, of the um, outcomes feature in Canvas, but I have not played around with that yet. But I'm going to quickly log back in. I have a quick question, Rob. Yes. If, if I use student view in Canvas, um, you know, I know you you signed in as a student in order to see how it would look like in the grades, mm -hmm. but can you see anything in terms of how the rubric see the student just using the student view option? Yeah. Yeah, if you, yeah, so yeah, I do have a student, I did sign into student view in this particular course, so let me go into grades and test students. I believe that you can see, well, let me just, we can find that out real quick by me just going into student view. I believe that you can see the assignment, you can see the rubric, but I don't think that you can see feedback, but I'm not 100% Sure, but we can go and see. You can see the assignment. You can see the rubric. You can submit the assignment. But I'm not sure how much more you can do with that. I prefer creating a secondary account only because you can, because it just gives you just more access to features instead of always using the, the student view. So I don't use the student view often. But I mean, it, it is useful if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to create a secondary account that there is some that you can see some things through, through student view. And for those of you who have not used student view in the past, I'm going to click on leave student view. I know I went through that quickly. And so to get to student view, you go under settings. And then on the right side, you should see student view. When you click on that, you get to see a lot of what students would, would see in Canvas. There are certain things that um, you won't necessarily see when it comes to assessments. But there, there's a lot that you can do within Student View and Canvas. The thing to remember, though, is that we'll create. Um, oh yes, yes. If you have if you have rubrics, um, there's a couple ways to, sh to share your your rubrics. You can share them with with other faculty. And in general, in Canvas, is that all your rubrics will available will be available to you under Outcomes. So let me quickly leave Student View. And just for the group, the question that Monty asked is, can I share rubrics to my team of instructors for mm -hmm. Marketing 309? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Outcomes and you select Find, oops, shoot. Actually, this is for the Outcomes. I'm saying, so. okay, let me go Manage Rubrics. If you go to one of your rubrics and you edit a rubric, Wait a minute. Oops, doing this wrong. Okay. So I'm going to go to an assignment. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to unattach the rubric. And then when I go to add a rubric to an assignment, it also gives me the option to find a rubric. So when I click on find a rubric, it will list all the classes I'm and either as an instructor or TA, and I can scroll through that, find the class with the rubrics. Here it's Canvas Training Owens, and then select one of the three rubrics I have in this class I want to assign to this particular assignment. The thing to remember, it's just not a double click here. You have to actually click on the rubric, scroll down until you see use this rubric, and click on use this rubric and will attach the rubric to the assignment.
Yes, if you want to see what's in, yes, you'd have to either be a TA or an instructor, or the the, um, the instructor could just download and um, the rubrics or copy them from 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 their course to your course. Or our technically, I would have to do that do that for you, but but it's possible. Yes. Are there any other questions? I know it's one thirty one. Are we? And we can stay, and if people have questions or want to talk about their experiences with it, that's fine. I don't, I don't cut it off right at 30 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So Sandra asked, Sandra asked, if you have strong comments in the rubric categories, do you recommend making comments? I always recommend making comments, especially when it comes to, uh, depending on the course and depending on, um, on, the sensitivity of, of the rubric, like if there's a wide range, because some folks will use a rubric where they'll go from, say, 10 to 19 points, 20 to 29 um, points. And so when there's a huge range within a criteria, and I'm going to give a student, say, like a 25 out of a 29 for a particular criteria, I'll explain to them why they got that, got that score, because otherwise you'll start getting questions from your students. Um, and so it really depends on the, how sensitive the rubric rubric is. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, was there a question from Monty? Another question? Um, I don't see one. Something just popped up. Oh, on how do I just... handle extra credit in a rubric? That's a good, you can change the points. But see, one of the things that will happen that, that's actually a very good question, Monty, because you you can actually add additional points, I believe. Let's let's actually, since you brought up that question, let's go ahead and actually take a look at that really quickly. So I'm going to go into diversity. I'm going to go into speed grader. Going to view the rubric. So, for example, in this one, you get five points, but if I want to give them six points, you know, Canvas will allow me to do that. I'm not sure how that's going to affect grading, but uh, Canvas will allow you to put in um, less or fewer points for each criteria. So that might be one way to handle it. And then there was something I think from Ben. Yeah, he had a comment that just said, I agree with Rob's comment that students are only likely to read summary comments, not comments that are tucked into each individual criteria. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, definitely. And I, and I uh, yes, okay. There's another question from Monty, I believe. Yeah, so last question. <laughs> you can ask you can ask more. <laughs> when I use a rubric, can I still enter details on a document crocodoc method and crocodocs in quotation marks? Yes, you you can do that. So if you have an assignment that's been submitted, you can still mark up the document that the students uploaded. So if I wanted to make comments on this, if I want to highlight, I could I could do that. Or you, you could do that, yes. And students would be able to see that when they go into their grades. So that's that's Monty. You bring up a, a good point. So you can actually do some overall summary comments in a rubric, and then reference parts of the document that you marked up for students, for the student, so they can actually have a better explanation of it. Or you can actually add your comments to the um, to the actual document using Crocodoc. Yes. Yep. Are there any other questions? We definitely have time for more. Well, I learned some stuff today. Yeah. Um, and I hope everyone else did. So um, thank you, Rob. Oh yeah, thank you. I, I enjoyed it. I look forward to the next 
yeah. presentation. So um, <laughs> the next one in the online learning webinar series is Peer Review in Canvas by Anita Warford, the ITC for the School of College. Um, and that will be about creating a Canvas assignment that uses the peer review tool, um, which I'm really interested in. I want to use that more. And um, there is another series that runs, you know, um, by just the library on library resources. And there is one on data management next week, which um, is going to be great. Research data management best practices by Linda Kellum, our data librarian. So if there's any interest in that, um, you can sign up through that webinar um, guide that I sent there. I will send up follow up. Um, email you know with that with the recording to this but if you guys want to check it out um, you can sign up at this link view past webinars of what we did in the fall and what we did um, in january and keep up to date with the ones that are coming up so are there any questions about the series or anything before i sign off yeah, thank you yeah so thanks everyone for coming and, um, thank you rob for hosting Yes. It was amazing. And um, I'm going to sign up. So I'll see everyone or see a lot of you soon. And uh, have a great week. Thanks. Yep. Take care. Bye.